So this one is one I first heard on tape, borrowed from a library. Uh, I saw it and I thought, that's one of the one of the records that I've not actually heard. I'll grab this, borrow it for a week, and um, see what I think. And it was this one from Rush, from 1991. Roll the Bones. Now, I didn't get the actual CD of it for years after, because to be honest with you, even though I lived with that tape for a week, I wasn't that impressed. Listening back to it now, I can kind of see why. I do like the title track, it's fun, obviously Geddy Lee doing that rap. It's fun, it's good. Um, but a lot of other things on there just leave me cold. They, they do nothing for me. Um, there's not a great deal in the way from Alex Liveson on there, really, the guitar player. It's all sort of mixed right down. I mean, you have to remember that this, in the early 90s, was Rush trying to appeal to a wider public. Hence the rap on the title track, Roll the Bones. It didn't work. It was an experiment. They were doing the same thing on Presto as well, the record before. It didn't work. They admit that in later life. They say that they were never going to be fashionable. And But they gave it a go. They gave it a try. I don't think it made them fashionable, but this record, because it was so light, did become actually quite popular. It did actually very well in America and surprisingly well here in Britain. So who's on the record? Well of course it's Lee Lives and Pitt, the classic lineup. The only lineup really apart from the first record. And you can't brush about any of those guys obviously. What's on the record? Starts off very well with Dreamline, which is instantly likeable. But then it starts to go a little bit belly up. I don't really like bravado. Um, a lot of the songs lyrically are about the idea of chance and the chance of life and the chance of the way things can change over the roll of a dice or the flip of a coin. You know, chance. It's all about that idea, that concept, which is very typical of um, the way Neil Peart thought and would construct his lyrics. Um, then you have uh, Face Up, which is memorable, but a bit annoying. That's the problem about these songs, they're a bit annoying. They get into your head, but you don't really want them there, because they're not particularly good. Maybe the fact that they get into your head is good to some people, but I like an earworm as much as anybody else. But if I don't like the rest of the song, and I just like the hook. Anyway, so then you have Where's My Thing, The Big Wheel, Heresy, Ghost of a Chance, Neurotica, and You Bet Your Life. Now most of those songs, quite frankly, as I said, leave me cold. I can live without most of them. I do like Dreamline, I like the title track simply because it's fun. Um, Where's My Thing, that of course is the instrumental, it's not bad, it's not bad. Not bad at all, it's got a nice bass line to it I seem to remember. Now I've not heard this for a while, mainly because when it came to actually listening to it I thought, I don't really want to hear it, but I do know one thing. It does sound great. The production is superb. It's handled by Rupert Hine, who they worked with before. So he knows what he's doing. And obviously it's partly self-produced as well by the guys. So when it came out, its critical reception 
wasn't brilliant. Most people thought it was okay to, okay to average to a little less than that. Nobody really talked it up. And I've not really changed my mind about this record over the decades since it first came out. Not really. It's all right. There's nice moments to it, but it's not one I play very often. And like I said, the prospect of putting this on last night or any other night before I was going to do this little uh, this little chat was just not a prospect I wanted to entertain. So that tells you how I feel about this record. I would say the only thing really to keep it above above poor is Neil's drumming. Neil Peart's drumming on this. His um, his kind of freeform style that he employs on this record because he deliberately wanted that. He had been um, he had been thinking that some of his drum parts were quite architectural in the past, and I agree with that. And he wanted something a bit a bit more challenging, a bit more freeform, something that he could almost almost ad lib to in some of the songs. Parts of them where he could almost ad lib, especially on stage. Whereas a lot of his drumming has been described as architectural. It's very almost like square. You know, this goes there, that goes there, this goes there, and you build something. Whereas he wanted to get away from that, loosen up a bit, and that's a good thing. Also, lyrically, Neil Peart and the rest of the guys felt that the, the lyrics on this album were very, very strong. And they continued to play a lot of these songs right up until the end of Rush, which I'm going to say has probably happened now. I can't see them ever getting back together again. Not in a, any serious way. So, I'm glad that they liked it. And I'm glad that the general public liked it. But me as a Rush fan who came in at the Farewell to King stage, that was one of the first records I got by them, I kind of felt it was a bit weak. But anyway, and I think the critics agreed with me, and for once, I agree with the critics on this one. It's not brilliant. It's not bad, but it's not brilliant. So how did it actually do in the charts? Well, as I said, surprisingly well. It actually got to, in Finland, number six, again, People in Finland have a loyalty to rock music, and that's good. In the UK, number 10, which is very surprising. Although, kind of not, because it's a very poppy, this record. Very poppy. And the British love nothing more than pop. And in America, in America, the big surprise to me got to number three. And worldwide, this thing sold just over a million copies. So for a record that, or a CD that is uh, not considered to be prime Rush, the best of Rush, this did very, very well. Now, have you bothered to listen to this ever as a Rush fan? Or since it came out? It's, it's okay, in part, but it's not that great, is it? It really isn't. So, that is the record that never really improved with time. Rush. Roller Bonds from 1991. 